going to um, continue where we were yesterday. This is going to be a very short video. Um, I have to go work later. I'm going to be on later though to do a gameplay comparison and I'm also going to do more coding. But for now I thought I'd just jump on and quickly review where we were and um, try to make the randomization of the positioning. We're not going to worry about the sprites being flickering. Okay, so copy path. Invoke item, F got tap. Okay, so that's where we left it. They're not getting drawn at the top of the screen. I thought we'd fix that, but the way we're going to fix it for now is just have less of them. Call the compiler and compile. Okay, so of course we need a longer interval. We're not even going to use level two, really. Well, we will at one point, but not now at all. So that there's pointless. Let's not even comment. It's a waste of time. Well, I'm going to put that back down for testing. You know, we don't want to sit there and watch it every time. We just want to see that it comes out at random, random exit positions every time. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at our spawn function and we're just going to add a random x value to, to it. It's really that straightforward. Um, this here is where it's being spawned. That is change out to spawn the food. And then we return. So we can do it in any order. We can we don't have to spawn it after we after we change the, the, the value x. We can do that right now here. <coughs> but it needs a random value. And the way we're going to do that is simply call a pre-made function random number. And if you look, we've already written this above. It will put a random number into A. There we go. So now we just load it with A. And a byte is 0 to 255, as you probably know. And uh, so is the screen width. So this should, in theory, come up with any number between 0 and, and 255, which would be the far right side. Um, actually, we need some more, something more advanced to make sure it doesn't get drawn off the screen. We need to make sure that um, it is less than max max x but we don't want to have to re-loop if it is so we can use the and bitwise operator and what that does is it takes a binary string and um, or a binary representation of a number and it compares it to the to the value in a and it, um, if, if, if the bytes are zero 
if either of them is zero, that the value in A will become zero. And that's for each bit. So in other words, the bit has to be a one to remain in both. Might be worth using the all actually because we want to keep it below a number. No, it's the and, it's and. So where did I put it? Call cool, random number. And well, here we need the calculator. And you can't see it. But I'm on my program is calculator and I'm in bit mode. Got hexadecimal, decimal and binary. And the number we want is two five five take away twenty five. So let's just call it two two five. I can't immediately, I'm not very, <laughs> I'm not perfect with bitwise operators myself, I don't know how to do that straight off the top of my head to be honest. I've lost where we are. Oh. Let's try this out. Two. So we we'll do, we we'll do this, and that is gonna that number there. That he, that that five ones is actually equal to uh, thirty one. So I'm expecting this to actually be restricted to the left side of the screen now, but let's see what happens. It's just calling that random number. It's wiping them bits out. It's a mask. Mask out highest three bits. So I, th I believe, still learning this myself, but I believe this is going to restrict it right down to, um, what number did I say? 31 so it's going to be between 0 and 31 now but let's try it save compile yeah very small segment of the screen okay so what we'll do is we'll put another one there a second that's going to now and now allow it to be up to 63 yeah Okay, let's put two more because that's going to allow a massive range. Well, not a massive range, but uh, 127, yeah. So I'll save. This should be about half the screen now. And there we go. Now, this gets tricky. I, I'm not sure. I'm going to if bitwise is actually suitable for this number because it doesn't it's not a multiple it's not a power of two what i'm trying to achieve but i'm going to tr you can use the bits there but you can e just as easily represent it with a decimal number so let's try just putting two two out see what that gives us there you go I don't know why it seems to 
always go to the highest one, which is very odd. That will be again to do with the bitwise. You have to think in binary with this operation. It's a bitwise operator. So what's tending to happen is it's actually favouring a higher number. Uh, I don't know why it's actually restricting down to the middle there. It is very unrandom looking. Right. In terms of quick and easy random generators, this is a very good one. I've read a, quite a few ways of doing it. This is very easy and actually normally reliable. But it's the AND operator here that's messing up. That's because if it goes over 220, it's just I believe it's going to favour certain numbers. Let me try and figure this out a second. <laughs> 220 in binary is a load of weird ones yeah let's try I believe I, f I think I fixed it by doing let's try this anyway oh I've just closed it um, let's do six ones at the front I, it does get confusing this but I did I did some exercises with it myself, and by the end of the exercise, I understood it. There we go. But sometimes I come back to it, I don't understand it. But... Oh, we've drawn one over the edge there. That's not good enough. And that's because, that's what I thought would happen, because this allows it any number up. But this is only wiping out the low numbers, which seems pointless. But if we if we do hand on all of them, that's that's absolutely pointless. That operation is pointless. So uh, I'm not sure if if hand is good enough, is adequate for this. We need to come up with a new way of reducing the width of the sprite, but only if it's further than the screen width. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to do it with, with min minimal uh, calls to A and minimal operations, but we could obviously compare to max max x, and if it's over that, we could reduce. We could either run the random number again, or um, or just reduce it. Do you know what? Maybe in 13 minutes. I was going to add the score as well. Let's let's leave it at that for now. Let's get rid of. Let's just put put it back to the end. Let's try that. That's going to be half the screen again. Yeah. How do you mask a number what, like put two five five in or two twenty five into your calculator? Hmm. Spending too long trying to avoid doing this, I might as well just do it. Okay, so we compare that x. If it's true, if if it's if it's above max x, larger than or equal to, we want to do something. I'm trying to figure out do we want to call or jump? I 
I mean, we could we could actually be a bit cheaty, but spawn, get around, and then if that is more than max Y, jump, and see spawn, get around. So now it will just keep looping until it finds a different one. That's going to be good enough for now, I think. Oh, done like that. 27, 127. Get round, not found. Oh. You have to put a, if you do a conditional jump, you have to add a comma there. There we go. And we're all good. <coughs> <coughs> Of course, you know, the gameplay needs a huge tweak, but the principles are there now. Um, oh, I didn't like that, but, you know, shit happened. It's not a perfect random number generator by any means. It's just stepping through early parts of the spectrum memory, which is known to change regularly, you know, constantly. And then just, um, just returning a byte from one of those register one of those memory addresses oh well the next thing we can do and the last thing because it's going to be a very short stream is print a score on the screen so the way we're going to do that is we're going to Create a string down here, or some data down here, I should say. Hmm, why do I want? To, it's just an organisational thing, this really. I've got the player data, the food data. We can go here near the random seed. So score label string I like to have very long names so I never end up making the same name again don't need that colon it would have worked with it but you don't need it to find byte score don't even need that Okay, so I'm going to assume right now that you understand a tiny bit about what ASCII is anyway, because we're going to use that in a minute. But you can look it up on Wikipedia and or we'll just watch me do it and you'll sort of understand it. You need to know about hexadecimal. And um, once you know that, it's trivial to understand how ASCII works. It's not essential to know that hexadecimal went to know how ASCII works. You can use decimal um, notation for it, but I don't. Anyway, so we've got a score label. We're going to put end of score label. There's a constant. In fact, let's stick with convention. Capitalize it. I put a dollar there. I'm going to check soon. Whether I think you can just put a zero or pretty much anything, but we'll see. So we've got a string of a set length in bytes. Each one's a byte, and then a label at this address that we're going to use to to work out the difference between the two. And then really right at the bottom here. Uh, print HUD. 
obviously that's just going to be our HUD here at the top of the screen. In order to call a, to print a string, there's a quick ROM routine built into the ZX Spectrum. You just have to do eight two five two. However, I use the hexadecimal, which is O X two O. What is it? Two O three. Two O three C. Same thing. That's gonna. What that does is it prints the string in DE. Uh, wait there. That's not very good word. Looks in DE for string data and prints. For length HL, it's not HL, it's BC. Sorry. So basically, in the DE register, it wants the data and it wants a, a, a number of how long that data is in BC. So let's load DE first. Score label string. And then BC end of score label take away score label string. So we're going to subtract that memory address from that memory address and be left with the difference in bytes. Return out. So I've already mentioned ASCII. If we wanted to print at the bottom, well, the thing is we don't want to print at the bottom of our game, the HUD. We do want it at the top left. But let's put it into um you know let's let's have a but like a what's the, what's the word? A margin, you know, let's let's leave it a few a few characters space on the side so it's not right on the left. So we'll move it to the left, but we'll keep it on the top row. And for that, you do need the ASCII uh, code, which is um, f called at, which it's like moving a typewriter or console location of at. And that's at 22. Or hexadecimal 16. So in our main we want to print the HUD. First, we have to load A with the value 22, or actually OX16, because I use hexadecimal for ASCII. ASCII at code. It's going to move the cursor for me on the spectrum screen. Uh, in order to do that, you have to use the function RST16 that calls. You don't need to know a lot about that right now. That basically just, it's like pressing return on your spectrum. Imagine, um, you know, it's telling, it's telling the uh, screen that that's to take A and actually use that. So it's, that's how you do that. And the weird thing with the at code is you actually need to provide an X and a Y straight afterwards. So if we want, well, we're probably best to actually store a value for that down here. And it can be a, another constant. Score label pos x equals 2. Because we don't want it at 0. I'll do one for y as well in case we want to move it easily. And I'll put zero 
obviously I think that I'm not sure with constants, but I think that does use some space in your game. If you're run, making a huge game, you might not want to just store a value, you might want to type the value every time. Um, here I was. So now you've told it you're doing an app command, so now you load A with the X position. You do RST16 again, and you load A with the Y position, and you do RST16 again. So now all that's done is move the cursor, it hasn't printed anything. So um, we now need to well, call our function we made. Is it print HUD? Yeah. And uh, that should now should work. Yeah. Oh, I've done it. <laughs> yes. Even though it says X and Y in the in the uh, structure of the method, the parameters when you read the documentation, for some reason with the spectrum they think X is the la uh, is the up and down movement and that Y is across. I don't know what planet they're on. There. So it gets confusing if you read different documentation. Some of it uses X and Y, and some of it uses it the other way around. Anyway, to combat that, we can, uh, like I, you could do two things. You could rename these variables, or you could um, actually put them in the other way around, which is what I do because, I mean, X is is across, <laughs> Y is up and down, so. There we go. Now score gets funny as well with um, with spectrums because you can only store a number up to two hundred and fifty five. You can store um, you can store words or, or sixteen bit numbers as they also called, which are much larger than that, but you can't put it into A. So the quickest way I've found is actually to have a a value for each one for tens, ones, hundreds, and then increment them and come up with a way of. I mean, I've already come up with a way. I know how to do it. Um, incrementing the number yourself, so you basically create your own base ten solution. So what I do is uh, score one should be db. Uh, yeah db0 and then if let's say we want to let's keep it simple they're going to only be able to score in the hundreds and it's it's going to well let's make it thousands so once they get to 9999 the score will stop increasing score tens score one hundreds score one thousands and this is quite common in retro games i've done a bit of rom hacking in my time and I've, lo I've noticed a lot of big budget games using this method of doing scores. There's loads of interesting ways to do it. This is one I just dreamt up in my head and it works well. Quite easy. But we're not going to implement the whole scoring system before I go offline. I've got to go somewhere very sh shortly. But um, what we will do is we'll show you how to draw the... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. So you have to draw the um, the values to the screen because you need to look at um, the ASCII spec. If you go to Wikipedia and write spectrum character set, because you'd think zero would be zero, would be zero, but it's not. It would have been very convenient if it was, but zero is actually hexadecimal three zero. Okay, so we need another constant. Score ASCII start equal OX for zero. We want to add that to that when we print because it's gonna. We're just gonna give it an ASCII command, so we're not gonna use um, quotations. That's telling it that these characters are in fact 
ASCII, but this time we're going to feed it directly ASCII. So um, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, what am I doing? Print HUD. <laughs> Where's Print HUD? There. So before we return. Oh, yeah, I remember now I had to do this is where I fell down last time. Um, the end of has to be after then. And in fact, oh god, I can't remember how I've done it. <laughs> Tell you what, ignore these for now because I'll look it up later and show you properly. But um, for now, I'll just show you that if you wanted to put a zero there. You could do x zero thirty, and then it would be o x thirty one. Now, because of the end of string there, it should just automatically do that. Yeah, and um, as I say, I'm in a bit of a rush. That's why I couldn't figure out right now how to do the um, proper score. But it's very simple, and I'll get it a bit more structured. I just thought I'd jump on here to show you that because I said I would when I logged off. So yeah, I think we've we've done enough for today. I notice I haven't been doing, and I probably should, a quick scan of the code so that you can copy it. I mean, it is on GitHub, but. It's not very well organized. I haven't posted a link to it. But I will do that soon. But if you've actually followed the video, you should be able to copy it. Especially this page. But um, also, also, Especially this page because I don't even look at the Tumblr often. So there you go. There's that, and then that, and that. There you go. All right. So I'm improving the stream every time. I'm going to make sure it will be better eventually. I'm just starting out, and uh, you know I'm going to be getting everything better, the sound levels and structure in the actual lessons. Anyway, later tonight I'm going to be doing gameplay videos and then much later another little coding session. See you soon.